Hey, this is Neighbor Argetsy, and bringing you some of the best comics that you might not know yet, but you're about to get to know them. Oh, thank you so much. I, I do want to make sure that you are listening and you do realize that I'm not Ellen. <laughs> I hear it all the time. Looks like Ellen talks like Reba. Well, it's so great to be here. I do spend so much time on the road, and there's always the craziest things happens in my travels. I uh, was working in Indiana, just across the Kentucky line off Interstate 65. Right there's where the time zone changes. And I forgot to ask where my show was, if they were on Central Time or Eastern Time. Well, I had to run into Walmart anyway, so I just grabbed a woman in the store, and I said, are you on Central Time or Eastern Time? She said, I don't work here. But I do have to admit that traveling has got to be a little bit more of a challenge now that I've gotten a, a little age on me. And because we have to use so many public restrooms. So now I always carry with me antibacterial wipes so I can clean the seat because I no longer have the thighs to hover. <laughs> I wish they'd put one of those handicapped bars on the back of the door. Give me something I can work with. <laughs> but I am starting to worry about myself. One day I pulled up to the drive through a SunTrust bank, and the teller said, how may I help you? And I said, I need to pick up my prescription. <laughs> and the second it came out of my mouth, I realized where I was. I said, and I was wondering if you'd run down to Walgreens to get it for me. <laughs> I mean, you're the one always bragging about customer service. And I tell you this, if you've got a prescription ready at Walgreens, somebody better go get it, or they'll blow up your phone like a jilted lover. <laughs> it's like fatal attraction. <laughs> Somebody's sitting in the corner speed dialing people. I'm not gonna be ignored. And I have literally been digging, digging, digging through my purse, looking for my cell phone while I was talking on it. <laughs> I can't find my phone. I, I, I don't know what I've done with my phone. My friend goes, well, just talk to me on this one until you find it. <laughs> and I was reading that in the near future, in Japan, they're going to have a phone that you implant into your hand. Hello? Hey, can you hang on a second? I have another call coming in. Hello? <laughs> and everyone is wireless. One day I'm waiting for the elevator. Elevator doors open. Guy goes, hey. I said, hey. He goes, how you doing? I said, I'm good. He goes, I'm on the phone. I said, I am too. But I found a way to really make that work for me. I ran into a, a girl went to high school with, she came running over, and she went, Karen. I said, Kathy. And she said, no. She said, I'm Sarah. I said, I'm on the phone. <laughs> and whenever I'm talking to my mom on my cell phone, if I drop the call and I call her back, she's in a panic. She's like, are you Okay. I'm like, well, yeah, I just lost my signal. And she's like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, that scared me to death. I was afraid somebody had knocked you in the head. <laughs> she's always worried about that. Don't stop at a rest area at night. Somebody will knock you in the head. <laughs> you better lock your doors tight. Somebody break in on you and knock you in the head. <laughs> I'm surprised we don't hear more about that on the news. Last night, 15 people got knocked in the head. <laughs> One was just talking on her cell phone. <laughs> and I told my mom I was doing that bit. I went through the whole thing for her, and she looked at me and didn't crack a smile. <laughs> she said, well, I don't see anything funny about getting knocked in the head. 
But it's kind of a double standard because I tell her, I'm fine, stop worrying. But if I've called my parents for several hours and nobody answers and I'm on the phone to my brother and what in the world's happened to mom and dad, they didn't say they were going anywhere, where in the world could they be? Then we both take off down to their house, start looking for clues. <laughs> in a little while, here they come. They bent the funeral home. Ran into people they hadn't seen in a while. Got to socializing. Eating fried chicken off the death buffet. I said, yeah, well, you need to let somebody know if you're going to be out late. I thought somebody had knocked you in the head. And my mom thinks the voicemail lady is real. One day she called, and as soon as I answered, she said, I called your telephone earlier, and some lady <laughs> said your voicemail was full, and you couldn't take any more messages. <laughs> you tell her you can always take another message when your mother calls. I said, okay, I'll tell her. A few minutes she called back and said, no, don't say anything. <laughs> said, I wouldn't want her to lose her job. But technology is a lot to keep up with, and there are cyber spies everywhere. They know everything you buy, everything you search for, everything you click on. I went to weather.com, J. Crew popped up. All I wanted was the temperature. Bought this blazer. <laughs> but the worst part of being on the road so much is that I miss my animals. Right now, I have three dogs, and they take every step I take throughout the house. When I go to the bathroom, I have three dogs. I have a little chihuahua going, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. And a terrier dropping a ball on my feet, going, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And an overweight cocker spaniel twerking up to me, going, scratch my bottom, scratch my bottom. <laughs> but I know I am a crazy dog lady, but I come by it honest. I mean, everyone in my family, we have all ground our teeth down to nubs, talking baby talk to dogs. When I was growing up, we had a dachshund, and my dad is not a touchy-feely kind of guy. He used to come home after work, look at us, and go, hey, and then grab that dachshund and go, what the baby doing? <laughs> what the baby do today? Did that baby chase a squirrel? Did the baby chase a squirrel? I was sitting there thinking, maybe I should start chasing squirrels. But I love all animals, and I recently had an amazing experience. I was down in Miami, and I swam with the dolphins. Oh, it was so cool. Well, actually, it was only one dolphin, <laughs> and that was a former dolphin. <laughs> but it was life-changing. <laughs> had a similar experience with the saint. And the other day, I was watching this nature do a documentary, and I learned some very fascinating facts. Did you know the only two species on planet Earth that go through menopause are female humans and killer whales? And I'm guessing they weren't killer whales until after they went through it. I'm sure they were fun, outgoing whales. with full lips and a good metabolism. <laughs> and once the female goes through menopause, she then becomes the leader of the pod. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not voted on. <laughs> I'm sure she just makes an announcement. Going to be some changes up in here. And did you know that a female dragonfly will fake her own death to avoid an unwanted sexual encounter? <laughs> she will literally float down from the sky and lie motionless on the ground until her suitor leaves. <laughs> Ladies, show hands where my dragonflies. <laughs> 
Now, I've gotten some really hateful comments from men about that joke. So, so let me just break it down. The documentary said she will fake her death to avoid an unwanted sexual encounter. Unwanted being the key word. It went on to say that when she met a desirable mate, she'd drop her top and throw her wings over her head. <laughs> hey, I'm Karen Mills. Thank you so much. Thank you.